Hi everybody and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Jimena Fernandez. I'm from Swansea University and also a member of the Center for TDA. In this video, we're going to talk about intrinsic persistent homology. Let's start by recalling some basics on persistent homology. Persistent homology is a popular tool in topological data analysis that allows to infer information about the homology of a space from a sample of its points. A basic pipeline is the following. I start with the point cloud, build the filtration of simplicial complexes and track the evolution of its homology groups. Finally, summarize all this information in a diagram called persistence diagram. Each point in this diagram represents the birth and the death of a generator in homology. Let's consider the following example. These are three different closed curves in the Euclidean space. The eight curve, the glasses, and a trivial knot in R3. Now, we will be only given a finite sample of its points. So we will compute its persistence diagrams in order to inspect which topological features can we capture of each of these spaces. In the first case, the diagram shows two salient generators of the first homology group. This captures correctly the topology of the A space if we think of generators with a long lifetime as topological features. In the second case, we obtain again two prominent generators for the first homology group. So at first glance, it's not clear how to distinguish between the topology of these two spaces only looking at its diagrams. A similar situation holds for the third space. So what happened? Well, the problem is that we use Euclidean distance as input in the computation of these diagrams. And in general, Euclidean distance may not capture the global intrinsic geometry. In the previous cases, we were under the so-called manifold assumption. That is, the hypothesis that the points lay in a submanifold of the Euclidean space. In that situation, Euclidean distance is not in general a global good estimator of the geodesic distance. So let's think a little bit more about the choice of the input distance when computing persistence diagrams. Back to our sample of the glasses, when we computed its persistence diagram from the Euclidean distance, the complexes of the Vitoris ribs filtration soon generate a bridge in the bottom region. And this bridge gives rise to the two main cycles that can be read in the diagram. Now, Imagine for one moment that you are able to compute the geodesic distance between the points in your sample. In that case, the filtration will respect the intrinsic geometry and the persistence diagram will reflect more faithfully the topology of the space. This is the kind of diagram that we call intrinsic persistence diagram. Okay, this is very nice, but in real life, we are only given the sample, and in general, we don't have any further information about the underlying manifold. So the question is, how to infer the geodesic distance from the sample? To answer this question, we will build an estimator of the inherent geodesic distance from the sample. The main idea is that locally, Euclidean distance is a good estimator of geodesic distance. But what does locally mean? Well, for compact manifolds, given some threshold delta in the error, there exists some global value epsilon such that if two points in the manifold are at a Euclidean distance at most epsilon, then the error of approximating geodesic distance by Euclidean distance can be bounded in terms of delta. The steps to construct the estimator are the following. First, choose a value of epsilon, that is, a notion of local. Second, construct the epsilon graph, a graph with a vertex for each point in the sample and an edge between points at Euclidean distance at most epsilon. Third, compute distances over the epsilon graph in the following way. Given two points x and y in the sample, compute all possible paths in the graph between these two points, and then measure the length of each path are the sum of the Euclidean distance of the consecutive points. Finally, pick the shortest path. In 2000, the creators of this estimator proved that under some conditions and epsilon and the size of the sample, this estimator is a good estimator of the geodesic distance. 
With this estimatory in mind, let's make a new attempt to compute the persistent homology of the sample of the glasses. This time, using as input the estimated geodesic distance. This is what we obtain. We can see that we recovered successfully the single generator of H1. So we're done, <laughs> or maybe not. There is still one problem, the problem of noise. This is another sample of our good oil glasses curve with a slightly higher level of noise. Again, we compute its persistence diagram using as input the distance given by the previous estimator. We try with different values of epsilon, but none of them seems to reflect the underlying topology. Let's inspect the epsilon graph. For small values of epsilon, it's too disconnected or not enough connected to form the cycle. But for larger values of epsilon, unwanted shortcuts start to appear in the bottom region. So it seems difficult to find a good value of epsilon for this example. And also, we can see that this estimator is not robust and highly dependent on epsilon. To approach this problem, we're going to consider instead another distance that can be computed from the sample. This distance is called Fermat distance. It was introduced in 2019 and can be computed as follows. First, choose a parameter p greater than one. Then, Compute distances over this time the complete graph. Given two points x and y in the sample, consider all possible paths over the complete graph joining these two points. And then compute the length of each path as the sum of the Euclidean distance to the power p of consecutive points. Finally, pick the shortest path. For instance, for a value of p equal to 2, one can see that the path gamma 2 is shorter than the path gamma 1 in the Fermat sense. Recently, it was proved that up to some constant that depends on the size of the sample, the dimension of the manifold, and the parameter p, Fermat distance is a good estimator of a weighted geodesic distance that is similar to the inherent geodesic distance, but with a weight associated to the density of the manifold that produced the sample. Let's try to visualize the effect of the formation of Fermat distance depending on the values of the parameter p. For p equal to 1, Fermat distance coincides with Euclidean distance. But for higher values of p, one can see that as the value of p increases, increases the cost of path that goes through areas of low density. And then there is an effect of the formation of the geometry that generates that opposite points in the bottom region become further apart. For a last time, I promise, come back to our noisy sample of the glasses. Let's review the persistence diagrams that we obtain using Euclidean distance or the estimator of the geodesic distance for different values of epsilon. And now compute the persistence diagram using Fermat distance for different values of P. We can see that with this choice, we successfully recovered the topology of the space. This is another example of intrinsic persistence diagram, this time taking into account not only the intrinsic geometry, but also the density of the sample. Thank you for watching this video. For more information on this topic, please look at the description. Bye.